All right, this is my third segment, speaking with Sharkman Dan. And this time we talk a little bit about the pros and cons of touching, when it's too much, and we talk about Guadalupe shutting down. So I walked something here. Tell me, this is some incredible visibility, calm conditions, and never-ending tiger sharks coming through. It's an amazing day. Oh, he just threw a piece of fish in that shark's mouth. So there's definitely feeding going on. And a whole lot of touching. And I know you have specific feelings about touching. Is touching okay in this case? Is this not okay? Is this excessive? Uh, or, is it... or if you're guiding the, the shark... Um... Yeah, there does seem to be a difference between just touching for touching sake and a redirection, which is probably what most people would try and say is what they're doing. If a shark is swimming straight towards you in a straight line and you've got the option of putting your hands out and stopping it or not, you're probably going to put your hands out and stop it. Um, I think what's happening more so here, though, is the um, the rubbing is to try and, like... Oof. Yeah, that's crazy. Isn't it? It's like it puts it into a trance almost. Did you see that bite though? You know, people talk about associating humans with food. How come no one says sharks are going to associate humans with getting a little rub? Why aren't you giving me my massage? I mean, as far as trying to get footage, what a golden day. These two tiger sharks just yeah. won't stop. They're obviously I would, very if if I was film if I was there that day and I was filming, I would probably um feel a bit frustrated by the constant touching and rubbing because that probably then means i don't use that shot mm. um, because it's not the kind of natural behavior that me as a filmmaker or underwater cinematographer is after um i mean having all the divers there in the shot as well is also obviously going to be um uh, a, a problem on dives like this i mean this looks quite similar to somewhere like bimini i don't know if it is uh, bimini just with the pvc pipes or is it tiger beach um i normally try and put myself right on the end of that line of people mm -hmm. so that you can see the sharks out in the blue um and i've had conversations with um feeders in bimini about uh, with the hammerheads um because sometimes there's a little bit of showmanship there and uh, kind of playing with the shark a little bit and mm -hmm. i've uh, explained to a few of them that when you do that i can't use that shot because I don't really want to put that on social media because it gives the wrong sort of impression. And I don't think it makes you guys look very good either. And um, I've had a few people saying, oh, actually, that's a good point. I didn't really think about that. And it, it does just make out that we're kind of treating these animals as our pets and, and, and things like that. And I don't think that's the right message to send either. Like, obviously, we don't want to say that these animals are, that we're trying to show that these animals aren't, um, vicious and mindless and obviously i think we kind of all know that now but we're probably going a little bit too far in the other direction of um, look how tame we can make this top predator and i'm not a huge fan of that either well in a perfect world we would leave them alone unfortunately we're between two extremes it's uh exploiting them for tourism or exploiting them with murder mm -hmm. anyway. How do we reach that in between? Because well, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of think, people would argue that tourism is the reason that they're still alive. Yeah, and I'm I'm not saying I'm not saying species. I'm not saying turn them into pets. I'm not saying it's right, but you know, yeah, I mean, you could do this dive um, as a tourism dive, keeping them um, more valuable alive than dead, which is of course the argument for tourism, um, eco tourism. Um, without um, all those extra bits, couldn't you? Like that wouldn't actually be that difficult to do. Um, a dive where the shark comes in 
and you give it some food and then it swims off and then it does the same thing. Like that wouldn't be that much of a difference to most of these people. Well, is this guy just getting lucky or does this work? Because the tiger shark keeps coming there. He sends it away and it comes back. Now, if you're, if you came there to see tiger sharks and the tiger shark keeps coming and he keeps sending is the it, tiger shark back for another try, that's a pretty, is it coming fact. back? Is it, is it coming back because he's rubbing it or because he's sitting on top of a bait box? Well, he's on top of the bait box. Yeah, I don't, I'm not claiming that the shark is there for affection, uh, whether right. it is or not. The, the bait box is right there. Yeah. But the tiger shark gets sent away and it's allowed to come right back. So the system he's using today is a successful system if you're there to see tiger sharks. If he wasn't doing this right here, mm -hmm. what's what's the alternative? What are you proposing? Uh, it's gonna it's gonna hit, it's gonna hit that bait box. It's gonna put its mouth on the bait box. It's gonna try and take the matter into its own hands. I think if you allow the tiger shark free roam to investigate and try and find that bait box, is it gonna? You know go smoothly or is it gonna i think it would do the it would do what they normally would do to most things which is give it a bump i don't think that shark's gonna then rip into the bait box and start thrashing it around it's going to start investigating it in in the ways that they normally do and i think that will still look quite cool actually like that that would still make for a quite an interesting shot and quite an interesting interaction and experience for most of those divers if in fact that is what would happen, I would agree with you. But mm. uh, I unfortunately heard a story about tiger shark trying to swallow an entire bait box. I mean, some of these sharks, that one there especially, would probably be big enough, have a mouth big enough to take out a bait box like that. Yeah. So, as long as we're on the topic, and it's a hot, it's a hot issue. We're talking about the line between leaving sharks alone and helping them with tourism what do you what do you feel about guadalupe shutting down uh well unlike you i've never been to guadalupe so i um i can't speak too much about what the operators were like i worked in great white shark tourism for quite a while so i kind of understand what the problems would have been mm -hmm. um uh, i tend to, we tend to find the nature reaction incidents that happens in various parts of the world in various scenarios so it's probably a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction to show that they're um, acting on possible complaints or feelings like the shark aren't being treated well or whatever it is um i, I don't know i think um if it if it doesn't happen for a couple of years it's probably not the worst thing for a long term, it probably um, does more harm than good, I would say. What do you think? You know, I, I have the I have the privilege of having been there, so at least I can say that I got to go before it was shut down. That aside, I just I hope it's not gonna get exploited. I just don't believe that uh, the Mexican Navy is gonna patrol it the way that some people claim is going to happen and there's just so many people that would love so many rich people that would love to go down there now that the now that there aren't tourism boats and get yourself a set of great white shark jaws on a fishing trip out of san diego or wherever i i hope that doesn't happen i'm just nervous about that if if the sharks get left alone and they're better for it then great but as far as like a knee-jerk reaction, they, they threaten crap every year and they know who violates. And I don't feel like anyone's ever actually gotten uh, punished. So if they were going to go in steps and actually try and prevent these antics that it was shut down for, you know, I think they could have done some other things yeah. to actually try and get people to take it, take them seriously. I don't feel like anyone ever got, spanked very hard 
maybe I'm wrong, but I don't. yeah, it went straight to the extreme. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry that you didn't get to go to Guadalupe. Not yet. <laughs> Let's see Not if it yet. reopens. <laughs> I want to thank Shark Man Dan for joining me for these first episodes. Uh, if you want to follow Shark Man Dan, he goes by Shark Man Dan on social media. And we're going to continue with the tiger shark theme. And I'm going to kick things off talking to Eli Martinez in the next episode. Hope you'll join me.